Welcome to Asia and the Pacific Policy Conference Week 2014 at the Crawford School of Public Policy. I'm here with Roger Magnusson, who is a professor in health law and governance and also an advisor to the SPC. Is universal health care achievable in the Pacific? Well, let's hope so. Um, universal health coverage refers to equitable access to health services for everyone. Uh, so it includes health care services, but it, it also includes um, the public policy interventions outside of the health sector needed to improve health outcomes. So universal health coverage has, has become a rallying point really for implementing the right to health. And so that's what we should be aiming for in the Pacific, I believe. So what is the biggest challenge for the Pacific in terms of achieving um, universal health care and addressing health issues? Well, I believe it's uh, non-communicable diseases at the moment. Uh, three years ago, the Pacific Forum ministers declared that NCDs was a, a human, social and economic crisis. And things have only gotten worse since then. We're talking about countries where, uh, in, in some cases, a third of the population has diabetes. Uh, we're talking about countries where, in some cases, uh, almost 60% are obese, not just overweight, but obese. And other countries uh, in the Pacific are world leaders when it comes to smoking rates. And so these are potentially preventable risk factors for death and disease, uh, but we need public policies that will uh, reduce risk factors across the population. So NCDs, I think, are a very important uh, challenge that Pacific leaders and development partners need to address. Do you see a role for civil society organisations in helping to improve health in the Pacific? Um, it was interesting, the 2008 World Health Report uh, talking about universal health coverage said that it's something struggled for and won by social movements rather than something that is bestowed by governments. And I think that's so true of uh, achievements in the health sector generally. The, a civil society uh, and NGO, uh, NGOs play a really important part because uh, people care about these issues, they keep their governments honest, they push their governments for more resources, uh, they, they alert development partners and other countries, constituencies in other countries to these issues. And so it's their passion and their fire that uh, can be an additional force beside government for addressing these issues. So I believe that civil society movements need to be uh, nurtured, they need to be included in policy development, uh, in policy implementation and especially in evaluation. Now you alluded to the burden of NCDs a little earlier. In a policy and, and health law sense, what do you think can be done to address NCDs and these other pressing health burdens? Uh, well, there's, there's quite a lot of consensus about this, actually. The, the Global Action Plan on NCDs, the Regional Action Plan on NCDs, the uh, NCD Roadmap Report that's recently come out identifies a set of, of priority public policy interventions or best buys, and they cover tobacco control, uh, alcohol control or harmful use of alcohol. Uh, and uh, policies for improving diet and improving levels of physical activity. So, uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, priorities actually have a legal and regulatory dimension. You know, with respect to tobacco control, uh, the priority is to fully implement the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, for example. Uh, so, we do know what needs to be done. The real challenge is implementation at the country level. Lovely. Look, thank you so much, Roger, for joining us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.